Look at the data on mortgage applications that we got yesterday. The purchase index was down 8%, and that's following a 3% decline the week before. And the refi index was down 9%, following an 8% decline the week before. Mortgages and refinances are plunging. And this has major implications for the economy. First of all, Wells Fargo just announced major layoffs in its home lending business. Why? Well, because people aren't able to do any refis. So they don't need all these mortgage agents if people can't refinance their mortgages. Because where are mortgage rates? Five and a half percent, something like that. The mortgage interest rate is now so high in relation to where it's been that there's nobody who can now refinance their mortgage into a lower rate because everybody's got a better rate than what they can get now. And that refi lifeline has been a major lifeline for the economy because it's given households a source of income because you only refinance your mortgage if the result is a lower payment. And if homeowners are able to lower their payments through a mortgage refi, then they have extra money to spend because they're not spending it on their mortgage. They have more money to go shopping or whatever. And that additional spending goes into GDP. It also helps employment in the industries that are the beneficiaries of that spending. So this has been helping a bubble economy, an economy based on consumer spending. If consumer incomes are freed up from having to make mortgage payments, they have more money to buy other things. Well, households can't do that anymore. Whatever your mortgage is, you're stuck. You're not gonna be able to reduce it. And in fact, for a lot of people, their mortgages are gonna be going up because you still have a lot of adjustable rate mortgages out there. I'm not sure the exact percent, maybe something like 15, 20% of the mortgages are adjustable. And they're not necessarily adjustable every year. A lot of people took out five-year fix where after five years it adjusts. Well, there are a lot of people that did that five years ago, and now they're getting up to their adjustment period, and their rate is going to adjust way up. And now they're going to have to start spending more money making their mortgage payments, which means now they have less money to buy food, less money to buy gas. Of course, food and gas cost even more. So chances are they're going to have to cut back on other discretionary items, which is why a lot of these consumer discretionary stocks have been having so much trouble. But we already have this anecdotal evidence of a weaker economy. Even more news today, weakness in manufacturing. The Kansas City Fed Manufacturing Index was supposed to come out at 39. That was going to be an improvement over 37 in March. Instead, the April number was just 25, which was way below the consensus range, which went from 35 to 40. So there's ample evidence that the economy is much weaker than everybody thought. And that is especially true when you look at the GDP number that confirms this. Now, of course, one of the biggest factors driving the GDP down was America's record trade deficit. We actually got the merchandise trade deficit. Now they call it the goods deficit. We got the advance estimate for March. So this was the final month of the third quarter. And this definitely weighed on the number. The expectation was for a deficit of 105 billion. And that would have been an improvement on the record 106.6 billion that was reported for February. Now that number was actually revised slightly lower. So it wasn't 106.6 as we were originally told. It was only 106.3, which was still a record based on the deficit of the past. Now remember, this is just goods. This doesn't include our surplus in services that reduces the overall deficit. But this is the big deal. This is the manufactured stuff. Remember, when Donald Trump ran for office to make America great again, it was because of our merchandise trade deficit. It was manufacturing. He campaigned to make America great again by rebuilding our industrial base, our manufacturing, because we were losing on trade because of these big trade deficits. Well, the March number, not only did it not contract, the way the experts expected, but it skyrocketed to 125.3 billion, shattering the old record miles above the consensus range, which went from a low of 103.7 billion to a high of 106.6 billion. This is a horrific number. 
I mean, nobody has ever seen anything like this number. I mean, the only thing more amazing than this number is the market reaction because the dollar went up. I mean, once upon a time, a number like this, not like we've ever seen a number like this, the dollar would be killed. Instead, the dollar went up. Gold got hammered on this news. Nothing that should have happened did happen. The markets are still completely clueless. Normally, the currency of a nation with such a horrific trade deficit, its currency would be punished because that's the way to get rid of the deficit. The currency crashes and now you can't afford all the imports anymore. And now your exports get a lot cheaper to foreigners and it helps bring your trade back into balance. But America is not being disciplined the way a normal country would because we have the reserve currency. You see, how did we pay to import $125.3 billion worth of stuff? We paid for it with dollars. We imported stuff and we exported dollars. See, dollars are America's greatest export, except they're worthless. We just print them. We create them out of thin air. They have no value. The stuff that we're getting has real value. You need factories, you know, machines, workers, land, all sorts of materials and are go into the production of finished goods that Americans are importing. And what are we giving our trading partners? Digits that we create out of thin air. Why do they do that? Beats the hell out of me. I mean, what is the world doing with all these dollars? What are they going to do with the $125.3 billion they just earned? I mean, I know what we're going to do with all the stuff we just bought. We're going to enjoy it. We're going to have fun. We're going to use all these products to make our lives better. What is the world going to do with all this paper? Right? Well, they're just going to hold on to it. They're going to buy more of our paper. But the more they buy, the less it's worth. The trade deficits really started to explode, I think, in, in the 1980s. But a lot of it was the result of going off the gold standard in the 1970s and getting to a position where we no longer had to produce stuff. We could just print money. Because when we were on the gold standard, we couldn't just print money because we had to mine gold first. Uh, but once we went off the gold standard and we could just create money out of thin air and then use that money to buy what everybody else produces, we started pr printing more and producing less and relying more and more heavily on the rest of the world. And that was also uh, an, an escape valve for American corporations because as we increased regulation and taxation, the way U.S. businesses were able to survive was to move all of their production offshore and to take advantage of what was then much cheaper labor in a regulatory environment that was a lot less costly. And so we were able to you know, you know, survive because of all that outsourcing. But now, of course, all those decisions are coming back to bite us because we've destroyed the comp productive capacity of the country. And now we're very vulnerable. You can look at what's going on with these global supply chains. And part of the problem is that whatever we want to buy first has to be shipped over here from China. And, and not only does it have to be shipped over from China and then unloaded on a port, let's say in California, but now everything has to be individually loaded up on trucks and sent to various parts of the country. You know, back when we produced our own stuff, we had factories all over the country. So stuff didn't have to come here on boats. And then a lot of the stuff that was produced was very close to the end consumer. But now if everything is showing up in Long Beach or Los Angeles and you got to ship it all over the country, I mean, it's very expensive to distribute all the stuff that we import.